Hello, my name's Brian Atkinson and welcome to UK Aircraft Explored. In this video, we shall cover the Spitfire Mark V's fuselage and associated equipment. As always, we shall be giving you extracts from the 1942 Air Ministry Manual, along with lots of unique colour AP diagrams. I hope you find this interesting. The Spitfire Mark V's fuselage is of all metal, stress skin construction with a detachable tail end. The forward part of the fuselage houses the upper and lower fuel tanks, and after this is the cockpit, which is covered by a sliding canopy hood which can be jettisoned in an emergency. The top of the fuselage, just after the cockpit, is also of transparent material to afford a rearward view for the pilot. The cockpit has a windscreen of bulletproof material which is one and a half inches thick. Early Spitfire Mark V's were fitted with an externally mounted bulletproof windscreen as shown here and in this AP diagram. Later Spitfire Mark V's were fitted with an internally mounted bulletproof windscreen as shown here. Here you can see a view of the internal windscreen frame structure along with an AP diagram covering the later windscreen. The cockpit is entered by means of a door on the port side of the fuselage above the top longerons. Fitted just after the windscreen is a smoke tinted dimming screen which can be slid upwards behind the windscreen to prevent the pilot from being dazzled. Normally the panel is stowed in a housing below the windscreen. Access doors and inspection panels are fitted in the fuselage skin where necessary and fittings for the Spitfire's controls and equipment are attached internally at various parts of the structure. Formed in the fuselage structure at the bottom of the fireproof bulkhead is a spar for the attachment of the main planes the spar projecting beyond the fuselage skin on each side, as shown here. Bulletproof panels are fitted behind the fireproof bulkhead and behind the pilot's seat. The basic construction of the fuselage consists of four main longerons and 15 channel section frames of hoop or U-shape, numbered 5 to 19 from front to rear the U-shaped frames are forward of frame 11. The top longerons are fitted along the datum line of the Spitfire and carry blocks on each side of the cockpit for levelling purposes. The metal skin is of old clad, riveted to the frames and stiffened between the frames by said section stringers, which are in turn riveted to the skin plates before the plates are attached to the frames. Moving to the rear of the Spitfire is the tail end of the fuselage. It is a detachable unit and incorporates the fin and stern posts. It is bolted to the main fuselage at frame 19. The forward fuselage portion extends from frame 5, which is the fireproof bulkhead, to frame 11 and forms the housing for the two fuel tanks and the cockpit. Frame 8 forms a complete hoop of closed channel section and carries a bracket at the top centre for the attachment of two bracing struts, which extend forwards to the engine mounting attachment lugs at the ends of the longerons. These struts are attached after the lower fuel tank has been installed. The fireproof bulkhead is attached to frame 5, which in turn is attached to the forward ends of the longerons. The frame carries four channel section members extending across the bottom of the fuselage and forming booms for the attachment of the main plane spars. Plate webs are secured to these booms which extend beyond the fuselage sides. Three holes being drilled in the top boom and four in the bottom for the plane attachment bolts. 
Two hemispherical jacking pads are bolted to the bottom boom. The auxiliary spars of the main plane are attached to brackets on the outside of the fuselage at the bottom of frame 10. The fireproof bulkhead consists of two metal sheets with asbestos between them and is stiffened by horizontal and vertical members of flange channel section. A bulletproof panel is bolted to the aft face of the bulkhead above the longerons. The top engine mounting lugs fit into the open end of the top longerons and are bolted through the longerons and through a cross member. The bottom engine mounting lugs are bolted through the bottom boom of the main plane attachment spar. The bottom of frames 6 and 7 are lined with cork and form bearers for the lower fuel tanks. Frame 9 is braced near the bottom by a transverse member and two diagonal struts, with further bracing members extending forward to frame 8. This bracing carries the mountings for the rudder bar sliding tube bearings and also for the rudder bar pivot. Above the top longerons between frame 8 and 11, a combing is fitted to form the cockpit fairing and is supported by an arch shaped member at frame 8, fitted with anchor nuts for the attachment of the instrument panel. On the port side between frames 9 and 11, this fairing is open and is fitted with a hinge door to provide access to and from the cockpit. The door is hinged along the top longer on and is fitted at the top with two spring loaded catches which secure it in the closed position. The catches are joined by two connecting rods to an operating handle near the forward catch. Movement of the handles forward and downwards withdraws the catches from engagement with the fuselage sides and the door can then be pushed open. The top edge of the door contains a channel section runner along which the cockpit hood slides. The catches on the door have two positions of engagement so that with the hood open the door can be secured in a partly open position during takeoff or landing. This prevents the hood being closed and trapping the pilot in the event of a mishap. Frame 11 forms a complete hoop and braces the structure behind the cockpit seat. At the top portion are four studs with milled edge nuts for the attachment of a bulletproof panel. We shall now look at the main fuselage portion. It extends from frame 11 to frame 19 and is shaped by hooped frames, similar in shape but becoming smaller towards the rear of the aircraft. Between frames 11 and 12, the top portion of the fuselage skin is fitted with transparent material to afford a rearward view to the pilot. The sides of the fuselage below this portion are fitted with channel section runners for the cockpit sliding hood. On the starboard side, the channel extends forwards along the top edge of the cockpit combing and on the port side of the forward portion of the channel is fitted in the top edge of the cockpit door. The top of the fuselage between frames 12 and 13 is braced laterally by diagonal members that where they intersect a support is formed for the wireless aerial mast as shown here. We'll now look at the tail fuselage portion. It's constructed integrally with the fin and forms a detachable unit which is secured to frame 19 by 52 bolts round the edge of the frame and four studs at the bottom longerons. A tailplane spar is attached to the unit at a double frame, the spar passing between the two portions of the frame to which it is bolted.
The aft portion of this double frame extends upwards to form the front spar of the fin, the rear spar being an extension of another frame to which the tailplane auxiliary spar is bolted. Horizontal ribs shape the fin and are attached to the stern post which carries the rudder hinges. The skin of the fin on the port side is riveted to the ribs and spars, but on the starboard side and at the leading edge it is secured by wood screws to spruce members bolted to the ribs. The 1942 manual now moves on to the pilot seat and mounting. It consists of two vertical channel section members braced by two cross tubes and two tubular struts, forming an inverted V between the cross tubes. The mounting is attached to the fuselage by two spigots at the bottom of the channel members, engaging in sockets at the bottom of frame 11, and two spring-loaded plungers on the cross-bracing members at frame 11, that engage in the tops of the channel members, as shown here. With this form of attachment, the mounting, complete with seat and operating gear, can quickly be detached from the Spitfire to assist with maintenance. The seat itself is of moulded Bakelite, which was an early form of plastic. It contains a well for the pilot's seat type parachute. The seat is attached to the mounting by four links, the two lower links being joined together by a cross shaft which passes through bearings at the bottom of the seat. The lower links are pivoted on the ends of the lower cross tube of the seat mounting and the upper links, of which the port one is adjustable, are pivoted at the top of the mounting. The starboard lower link forms part of the operating handle by means of which the seat is raised or lowered. This handle contains in its end a spring-loaded plunger attached to a rod inside the handle and joined to the pin which projects through each side of the handle. The handle moves between two quadrants attached to the seat and engages in any one of six notches in the quadrant to lock the seat in the position desired by the pilot. The total vertical adjustment of the seat is 4 inches. To assist the raising of the seat against the weight of the pilot, a compensator is fitted to each side of the seat and to the seat mounting. Each compensator consists of a cylinder inside which is a spring-loaded plunger and a plunger rod, which projects from the cylinder and is attached to a short lever on the operating gear cross shaft. The cylinder is attached to the top cross tube of the seat mounting. The back of the seat is fitted with brackets for the attachment of a bulletproof panel. The Sutton harness and release gear is fitted to the seat, being attached by links at the sides and a cable at the back. The release mechanism that allows the pilot to lean forward when necessary is attached to the top of the harness by a spring-loaded bayonet connection. The socket of the connection is attached to duplicated cables which pass R through a fair lead at the aerial mast support to a spring-loaded plunger in a housing secured to the top of frame 15. The plunger and tube are locked in position by a spring-loaded spigot mounted on the housing and connected by a Bowden cable to a release lever on the starboard side of the cockpit. The lever is of spring-loaded bolt type and when the pilot pushes forwards and downwards withdraws the spigot from the plunger and allows the harness to be pulled forwards against the action of the spring inside the tube. On allowing the plunger to return the spigot springs back into engagement and locks the harness against movement. The bayonet connection at the forward end of the cable is supported by a thinner cable attached to the top of the fuselage. A padded headrest for the pilot is fitted onto a former secured to the top of frame 11. Well that's it for this video. 
I hope you found it interesting. And please remember we have many more videos in production covering the Spitfire Mark V along with many other aircraft. If you'd like to, please click the free subscribe button below and also like to get notifications when future videos are posted. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.